Hello everyone, welcome to U.S. Immigration News. Today, we're discussing an essential topic that affects many people going through the immigration process, visa retrogression. Now, you may have heard this term before or seen it in forums, but what exactly is it, and how can it impact your immigration journey? We will decode everything in this video. If you are interested in any of these topics, please stick around till the end of this video for your immigration updates. Visa retrogression can be frustrating and confusing, especially if you're waiting for your green card. Understanding how it works, why it happens, and what you can do in the meantime is critical to managing your immigration expectations. In this video, we'll dive deep into what visa retrogression means, how it occurs, and what steps you can take if you're affected by it. If you like this video, please hit the bell button, subscribe, and like it so that you may get updates straight to your smartphone or other smart devices YouTube page whenever there are any new ones. What is visa retrogression? Let's start with the basics. The U.S. government, specifically Congress, sets yearly limits on the number of immigrant visas that can be issued for each visa category and country. These limits are important because, in order to adjust your status to that of a permanent resident, aka get a green card, a visa must be available for you at two points, when you file your application and when your application is being processed, or adjudicated. The Department of State, DOS, publishes a monthly visa bulletin that lists the cutoff dates for various visa categories. If your priority date the date your immigrant petition was properly filed, is earlier than the current cutoff date listed in the bulletin, then congratulations, you're eligible to apply for permanent residency. However, things don't always move forward smoothly. This is where visa retrogression comes into play. Retrogression happens when the cutoff dates actually move backward instead of forward, delaying visa availability for applicants who were previously eligible. Why does visa retrogression happen? Now, you might be asking, why would the cutoff dates move backward? The answer lies in visa demand. Think of the visa system as a supply and demand situation. Each year, the U.S. government allocates a specific number of visas for different categories, like family-sponsored or employment-based visas, as well as for each country. When the demand for visas in a particular category or country exceeds the number of visas available for that month, the cutoff dates may retrogress. Essentially, more people apply than there are visas, so the system slows down to manage the backlog. This often happens toward the end of the fiscal year, which runs from October 1st to September 30th. As we approach the end of the year and the annual limits for visas are nearly met, the chances of retrogression increase. However, the beginning of a new fiscal year brings a fresh supply of visas, and the dates may move forward again, though this isn't always guaranteed. The Visa Bulletin and Priority Dates To understand visa retrogression, it's crucial to know about the Visa Bulletin and Priority Dates. The Visa Bulletin is released each month by the Department of State and shows the cutoff dates that determine who can move forward with their green card process. These cutoff dates apply to different visa categories like family-sponsored and employment-based, as well as to specific countries with high immigration numbers, such as India, China, and Mexico. Your priority date is your place in line for a visa. For family-sponsored cases, the priority date is usually the date the family petition was filed. For employment-based cases, it could be the date your labor certification application was received by the Department of Labor, or when your I-140 was filed with USCIS. Retrogression can throw a wrench into the process because the cutoff date you were counting on one month could move backward the next month, meaning your green card may be delayed. What happens if your case is affected by retrogression? So, what happens if visa retrogression affects your case? Let's say you've applied for adjustment of status, meaning you filed Form I-485 to become a permanent resident, but during the adjudication process, your priority date no longer meets the cutoff date in the latest visa bulletin. In this case, your application will be put on hold until a visa becomes available again. It's important to note that this doesn't mean your case is denied. Your case is essentially in a waiting room until your priority date matches the cutoff date again. Your file will be held either at the USCIS Service Center where you originally submitted your application or at the National Benefits Center, NBC, if your case has progressed to the interview stage. While you wait for visa availability, you can still take certain actions to ensure your life isn't on hold. For example, if you filed your I-485 before your priority date retrogressed, you can still apply for employment authorization, Form I-765, and advance parole, Form I-131, 
which allows you to work and travel while waiting for your green card. How can you stay updated? Now, keeping an eye on the visa bulletin is key when dealing with visa retrogression. The Department of State updates the bulletin every month, and you can access it on their website. The bulletin gives you valuable information, like current visa cutoff dates and projections for future visa availability. You can also subscribe to receive updates or check the monthly visa bulletin on the DOS website. Here are some important factors that affect the cutoff dates. 1. The number of visas issued so far in the fiscal year. 2. The projected demand for visas in upcoming months. 3. The remaining number of visas under the annual limit for that category or country. All these factors contribute to whether the cutoff dates move forward, slow down, or retrogress. Being proactive and monitoring the visa bulletin regularly can help you stay informed and plan accordingly. Employment and travel while you wait One major concern for many applicants is the impact of retrogression on their employment and ability to travel. The good news is that individuals who properly filed a Form I-485 before their priority date retrogressed can still apply for employment authorization using Form I-765. This allows you to legally work in the U.S. while you're waiting for visa availability. Similarly, if you need to travel abroad, you can file Form I-131 for advanced parole which permits you to leave and re-enter the U.S. without jeopardizing your green card application. Visa retrogression can be a frustrating part of the U.S. immigration system, but understanding how it works and how it might affect your case is key to navigating the process. Always stay updated on the latest visa bulletin, keep your information current with USCIS, and explore available options like work permits and travel authorization to ensure your life doesn't come to a standstill. That's all we have for you in this bulletin. I hope you found this video useful. We will continue to keep a close eye on the developments as immigration related updates and will publish new videos when there are more updates. The U.S. Immigration News Channel provides all necessary visa information and procedures for your U.S. immigration journey. It is important to understand the United States immigration processing steps, visa application requirements, processing times, forms, fees, and more. We will continue to provide all information about U.S. visitor visas such as B-1 and B-2, work visas such as L-1A, L-1B, and H-1B, student visas, green cards, immigrant visas, EB-1, EB-2, EB-3, EB-4, and EB-5, and family immigrant visas. Thank you for visiting us today, and we'll see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe channel for more U.S. immigration update videos.